Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And I've got something really exciting for you today. You're looking at a brand new Tier 8 premium German tank destroyer, the Rheinmetall Scorpion. The Rheinmetall Scorpion has the highest alpha damage of any premium tank destroyer in the game, with its 128mm main armament inflicting 490 average damage per hit. It also has a fully traversable turret and 7 degrees of gun depression, which gives it the flexibility to work a ridgeline like more of a medium tank than a tank destroyer. It's fast, really fast, with a top speed limit of 60 km an hour and enough engine power to get there, leaving its competitors, like this Rheinmetall Borsig, lagging behind in its dust. Oh, and did I mention it has a really cool paint job? So if that sounds like your cup of tea, stick around, I've got some Ace Tanker gameplay coming right up after I run down the statistics of this vehicle, and if you have no interest in picking one up, I'll let you know what to watch out for when they appear on the battlefield very soon. So if any of you were watching my live streams at Gamescom last year, you'll know that I actually managed to play this tank, I was very lucky to be able to do so, so I've already previewed this tank on this channel, I'm just going to quickly tell you how the statistics have changed. It has lost 150 of its hit points since then, it's lost 10 meters of its view range, but it's increased in accuracy from 0.34 to 0.3 and it's gained a whopping rate of fire increase of 0.7 which really was the major downside of this tank when I was playing it last year is that its rate of fire and its DPM was just really bad. So the best way to see how good the Rheinmetall Scorpion is is to compare it to the standard German tank destroyer, the Rheinmetall Borsig Waffenträger and also the Kanonen Jagdpanzer, the readily available tier 8 German premium tank destroyer. We can see that the Scorpion's DPM, while it's improved since last year, is still not quite as good as the Borsig. The Borsig fires 5.22 rounds a minute, whereas the Scorpion fires 4.92. But when we consider the alpha damage is 490, double that of the Kanonen Jagdpanzer, and also take into account that its DPM is higher than the Kanonen Jagdpanzer, this vehicle certainly looks like it is going to be dishing out a lot more punishment than the current tier 8 premium German tank destroyer. The Scorpion keeps one of the best things about the Borsig and that is 246 millimeters of penetration on its standard ammunition. And if you're so inclined and you want to fire APCR, that goes up to 311 millimeters of penetration. And as this is a premium vehicle and makes a load of credits, you probably have the currency to afford to fire quite a few premium rounds in this tank. The aim time of the Scorpion is an excellent 2.1 seconds, which is better than the 2.3 seconds of the it gets when you use the 128 mm However, that's not quite as good as the recently buffed Kanonen Jagdpanzer, which gets 1.8 seconds aim time, which is just excellent. However, the advantage that this tank has over the Borsig with regards to aim time is lost when we look at the gun dispersion values, which are 0.26 while moving, 0.26 while turning the tank, and 0.16 when turning the turret, which is worse than the Borsig, which should mean that it pretty much has the same kind of bloom feel that the Borsig does. But the aim time, as you would expect on a much larger caliber gun, is way worse than on the Kanonen Jagdpanzer's 90mm. Since last year, the Scorpion's accuracy has been buffed to an amazing level. It is 0.2. 3 accuracy. This is utterly incredible. It's way better than the Borsig. It feels so much more reliable in the games that I've played in the tank. And the accuracy is even better than the rather decent 0.32 on the Kanon and Jagdpanzer. 0.3 is marvelous and you are going to be able to snipe at long ranges where you certainly want to keep your opponents in this vehicle. Another key advantage that this tank has over the Borsig is 7 degrees of gun depression. But it's worth mentioning that this 7 degrees of gun depression is only pretty much in a 90 degree arc over the right and the left of the tank. And over the front, because of the shape of the chassis, you only get 6 degrees of gun depression. So a lot like on some of the German medium tanks, you want to be sticking your gun over the side, but uh, definitely not the rear with only 3 degrees of gun depression over the back of the tank. But when we look at the Borsig, it is just better in every regard than the Borsig, apart from directly over the back. And this could be one way that you avoid taking 490 alpha damage from the Scorpion. If you do manage to get behind the tank, look how little gun depression there is with the three degrees. You could, and also considering the tank is very tall, you could hide many medium tanks behind this vehicle. But just watch out, as soon as it does get towards the side, it will be able to depress the gun to be able to get you. However, one thing to watch out for with the Rheinmetall Scorpion is that its elevation is not excellent at 14 degrees, and this tank finds it very hard to aim up at its opponents, and especially if it's on a downslope, it can't often shoot at opponents on opposite ridgelines. But now on to one of the key advantages of the Scorpion, and that is that it's way faster than the Borsig. The tank goes at 60 kilometers an hour forward, 
forwards and 20 kilometers an hour backwards, which is very useful for when you're trying to pull back around a corner. Borsig drivers will know that probably one of the main weak points of the tank is that when it's got itself into a position, it's not leaving very quickly. 35 kilometers an hour forwards and 12 kilometers backwards. Fair enough, this is not as good as the Knon and Jagdpanzer. That thing is ludicrously quick with its 70 km an hour top speed limit. But one thing that doesn't let the Rheinmetall Scorpion down is the power to weight ratio. It is over 17. That is so much better than the Borsig, which gives this tank the grunt in the engine to be able to actually get up to that 60 km an hour top speed limit along the flat and up shallow gradients most likely. Unfortunately, however, the tank does not get the great ground resistances that the Kanon and Jagdpanzer gets, which makes this tank significantly slower than probably one of the fastest tank destroyers in the game. But the ground resistances aren't that much worse than the Borsig, which does make it much, much faster, as we saw with the drag race at the start of this video. So as I mentioned, this tank does get a fully traversable turret, but it doesn't traverse that quickly. The same speed as the Borsig, 18 degrees a second, that's pretty much like a very high tier heavy tank like the Mouse or the E100. But one thing that definitely lets the Scorpion down is the tank track traverse. It is 30 degrees a second, and I did some tests, and the Borsig does turn a lot faster than this tank, with its 38 degrees a second track traverse, which makes the Scorpion feel like a bit of a drag race. It can go very quickly, but it's just not going to be able to turn the corners and it does lose quite a lot of speed. So now onto the armor of the Scorpion, and as this tank is based on the Panther chassis, I bet you're expecting it to be at least reasonably thick. Well, you're gonna be very disappointed. The frontal armor is 30 millimeters, the side is 16, and the rear is 20. And if we look at the front of the turret, it is only 14 millimeters thick, and if you manage to slam one into the back of this tank, it doesn't really have any effective armor, and any round is going to penetrate the back of the turret, that is. And so this means that the 30 millimeters of armor on the Rhyme Metal Scorpion is going to be overmatched by any rounds that are 90 millimeters plus, which is pretty much all guns that will be shooting at this tank apart from some tier 6s and some tier 7s. And so when shooting at the Rhyme Metal Scorpion, you don't really need to aim for any weak points, just aim in the center mass and hopefully use high explosive shells if you have pretty much 100 millimeter guns plus and you are going to devastate this tank. One thing that should be mentioned is the Scorpion is very tall indeed, and it's going to be notoriously hard to be able to hide this tank. Just look at it compared to the Borsig. In fact, this vehicle is slightly taller than a Ferdinand, at least in the middle part of the tank, and is kind of the same height as the tier 10 German tank destroyer, the Griller, and everyone knows how easy it is to hit that thing in the top of the turret. That also means that this tank gets an awful camo rating. Its base camo when stationary is 11.6, and you can't improve that by putting on any camouflage because I guess that Wargaming are accounting for that with the fancy paint job that this vehicle gets. And you'll probably be surprised to know that this means that the tank has worse camo rating, significantly worse camo rating, than the Ferdinand. And we don't even need to compare the camo rating to the Borsig. This gets 26.5% camo rating when stationary, the Scorpion 11.6. That means you're going to be spotted at much larger distances than you would in the sneaky tank destroyer. That is its counterpart, the Borsig. And really your camo rating is almost identical to the Griller when you're stationary. In fact, it's just a touch worse. So this tank's health has been reduced significantly since Gamescom last year where it was 1,300. Now it is 1,500, but that is still 50 more than the Borsig. The view range of all three of these tank destroyers is identical at 300 60, which is a little bit frustrating because unless you have pretty much the best crew and you're willing to use chocolate, you're not going to be able to get up towards a decent view range using coated optics in this tank and so it's almost certainly better to be using binoculars. So a lot of you will buy the Rheinmetall Scorpion to be able to crew train your German tank destroyers. So you might be interested to know that this vehicle has a commander, a gunner, a driver, and a radio operator. There is no loader in the Scorpion, which means that if you absolutely adore the Borsig, its counterpart, which doesn't have a radio operator, you're going to have to try and find one from perhaf your Ferdinand, a Jagdpanther II, the WTF Panzer IV, or maybe the tier 10 German tank destroyer, the Griller. But there's one thing that is absolutely bizarre about this tank, and that is that the commander is actually the loader. So if you wanted to pick yourself up safe stowage, you would have to train a commander specifically for the Scorpion. But it's unlikely you're going to do this, and you'll probably just forego having safe stowage on the tank. So there aren't really many choices for equipment on the Scorpion. Of course, you want to take the large caliber tank gun rammer, unless you're a pacifist and you don't like killing your opponents. And considering the aim time is so darn good on this tank, I'm not sure 
ensure an enhanced gun lane drive is necessary. But this vehicle, being open top, cannot use improved ventilation, so that's a bit of a shame, just like on the Bortic. But that definitely gives you more slots available. Again, if you want that improved aim time, you should probably take an enhanced gun lane drive. I personally want to improve my camera rating at long range using a camo net, and then that leaves you with one final choice, either taking coated optics or binoculars. Now, unless you get some really good crew skills, by using coated optics and chocolate on this tank, your view range only goes up to 413. But if you have a fantastic crew because you love your German tank destroyers and you've got brothers in arms, recon, and situational awareness, then your view range with coated optics can actually go up to 448, which I think will be enough on this vehicle. But if you don't have an experienced crew and you're not willing to use chocolate, then I definitely recommend you instead take binoculars on this tank. Crew skills wise, it's very simple. You want to focus on camouflage on this vehicle until you get sixth sense on your commander. And then you want to train up things like recon and brothers in arms when you've got the perk available on all of your crew. For your gunner, you firstly want to take concealment, then retrain for brothers in arms when you reach your second skill, then probably take concealment again. And then when you reach your third, take something like snapshot. And on your driver, it's the same story apart from you're going to be replacing snapshot with either off-road driving or clutch braking. And I think both are equally useful on this tank. And finally, on your radio operator, take concealment, brothers in arms, and situational awareness, and all the others, they don't really matter too much. So I think that's quite enough theory crafting, let's get stuck into some gameplay. So here we go, a completely average matchup for the Scorpion here. Three tier 9s on the enemy team, three tier 7s, and a whole variety of equal tiered tanks that we get to test ourselves against. Now, when I first played this tank, I thought, boy, that paint job looks good. And secondly, I thought, Hell, this thing is fast. It's going at 53 kilometers an hour here along the flat. Its ground resistances are letting it down a little bit that it's unable to get up to that fantastic 60 kilometer an hour top speed limit the tank has. But one thing's for certain, if I was playing with the Borsig, I would be hanging around with the heavies here and the really slow tank destroyers or making my way back round the, the side safely because if I did get caught out, then I would have no way to run away. However, that's certainly not the case with the Scorpion. You can get yourself into aggressive locations and that can give you the opportunity to take a swing, but unfortunately a miss there against the Bat Chatty on AP. Next, we're going to be looking for a shot against the Mutz. Will we find it? No. I really don't think that the slight rate of fire advantage the Borsig would have would have been enough to be able to shoot the Mutz there. But let's be honest, the Borsig would still be trundling its way up into this position along with the heavies. Certainly not fast enough to get up here this early on. So, 128 millimeters, 490 alpha damage. That is some serious potential. Any of you that have watched my stream or have watched my tank review of the M4 Revelorise will know that I just love the alpha damage on that tank. 390 with the APCR is great, but it's certainly not 490 with the 128 millimeter gun that this tank has. And so that means that whenever you connect, you, you, you might as well be hearing a cash register open because you are making a load of credits and you don't really have to hit that many shells during a game to be able to make a large amount of profit. So we found the side of a T-34 turret there. A good hit in. Again, now we're starting to see the gun depression of this tank. We managed to depress our gun over that ridge line with the seven degrees and be able to punish the T-34. Not quite enough to be able to get the Panther here. I thought that I would be able to uh, depress further and that team has absolutely raided the forest. They're, they're really going to stick it to those heavy tanks in there. They're outnumbered. And so what I was thinking right now is let's get into a position to be able to try and support them. Unfortunately, my camera rating is not brilliant in this tank. And it looks like the tortoise manages to put a very high roll into us for 480. And that was certainly unwanted. So from this position, I'm thinking, am I going to be able to shoot these guys? Am I going to be able to shoot these guys? Yep, that one went into the batch app. Great result there, you know, when you're able to take a third of the hit points away from the, the brand new tier 9 medium tank. That's the kind of stuff that you want. Now, this is one of the most important things in the replay. The fact that if I was driving a Borsig right now, or some of the, the slower tank destroyers, by making this play I would be taking a great risk. I want to get myself into a position to support the T-54 Mod 1, the IS-3 and the Carnarvon. Now, if I was in a slower tank destroyer, I'd most likely have to sit around up there. However, I've managed to get forwards. Oh, that was a poor shot against the Panther 2. I didn't give enough lead. It doesn't matter how many bushes I'm trying to shoot through here. I should have been able to connect that one nine times out of ten. Let's try and make up for it and finish off the Mutz. Yeah, there we go. 159 damage, taking out the Tier 8 German premium tank. Now looking for a shot into the Panther 2. Or even in the SU-12244. 
But I digress back to what I was trying to suggest, and that is a horrendous low roll. 374? That is not right. I meant to do 490. That is almost a min roll, or it might even be a min roll in this tank. But it doesn't look like it matters, as we do manage to finish him off. So the key, my key point here, is that if I was driving the slower tank destroyers, I would have just sat up on the ridge line because going into this position would have been too risky. You can see that I've turned my tank around and I'm ready to run away, making full use of that fully traversable turret, but also not shooting over the back of the tank where I only have three degrees of gun depression. And so from here, I'm ready to, to scoot, right? This is the shoot and scoot idea. And being able to accelerate quickly with 17 specific power ratio, that horsepower to ton, and be able to run away at 60 kilometers an hour, I feel confident to be able to control the range of engagement in this vehicle. And that's something that you will always want to do in the Scorpion. You want to try and keep your opponents at about 350 at the closest, hopefully to 450, or if your allies are spotting, 560 meters away from you where they're unlikely to be able to spot your horrendous camo rating and you're still going to be able to put in effective rounds into them. And hopefully you've also got a camo net, binoculars, or if you've got a very experienced crew in chocolate coated optics on this tank, and so you're going to have to make up for that awful camo rating. Nevertheless, a great result there. We managed to dish out a lot of pain, albeit uh, not high tier tanks. And you're just getting an overall idea of how the Scorpion feels. It's fast, and when it gets there, its aim time is not too long, and its accuracy is brilliant. As I mentioned, that 0.3 accuracy on this tank, I, I really felt when I was playing it that if I missed, it was my fault, and if I really focused in on the shots, that they would go where I wanted them to. So we're going after the AMX 1390 here. Not many tank destroyers would be chasing down a light tank, but this is what happens at the end of the game. On the move, 490, a complete average roll, but I've managed to get myself into a sticky situation here. The T-54 Mod 1 is going to ram me, and he low rolls, and then he rams himself to death on me. Okay, I, I guess he wanted to pick up a kill on the brand new Scorpion, even before it's been released, right? But nevertheless, my team do manage to finish this one off after the bat chat runs away for a while. Still a great result for this tank. That was our fifth kill, 3,400 damage in just under six minutes. So now I want to highlight how the fully traversable turret and the nice alpha damage of the Scorpion does make it a rather nice tank for, should we say, corner fighting and for trading. When you put in those 490 alpha damage bombs, your opponents certainly do feel them. But that's not to say that you don't feel the enemy shells when they put them into you. We get hit there for 236 damage, and that is certainly unwelcome. Our 1,150 hit points aren't going to go very far. And it looks like the shell just enters our turret, hits the pincer of the scorpion, but, you know, we hit him a little bit harder, right, guys? He hits, he hits us for 236. We hit him for 557, that T-34-2, losing 42% of his hit points. So I, it looks like I aligned myself wrongly there against the ridge line, and unfortunately I get spotted, but this IS-3 looks just too juicy. We come round, our aim time isn't too long, our accuracy is good, another 488 damage done there. And as long as you're aware and you just have a look and you wait for your opportunities and you just get a feel for them, you really do start to punish tanks. And uh, I don't know, this just feels like one of the most flexible tank destroyers ever. Goodbye Indian Panzer turret and I decide to advance there, 432 damage done. I feel like it's our time to push this flank because the south might not hold. So we take a hit there from the T-34-2 as we advance. That's one thing you've got to watch out for, is if people just get even an opportunity to take a, a shell at your tank, even, even a, a, a shot and a hope, it's very likely to damage. I don't know what that IS-3 was doing, but luckily for us, we do manage to finish him off. And I want to try and progress the fight over the ridge line, see if we can take out the Pershing. That T-34-2 advances. Unfortunately, good turret armor there on the Chinese medium tank, and we're unable to penetrate him. But maybe we can get ourselves over the ridge line. Just not quite enough gun depression over the front of the tank. Ah, oh, there we go. We got him. Maybe we'll ram the T-32 to death. Well, not quite. So from here, we can see that the, the southwest has just completely fallen. So I want to use the 60 kilometers an hour that this tank has to be able to get into position. Maybe we can finish off the T-49. Not quite. Somebody else hits him just before we do. The shell velocity on this tank, probably one of the only disappointing things about it, I'd say. And so now here we go. Scorpion in its environment dealing with tier 9 and tier 10 tanks that have to pretty much drive, I'd say, 
in front of it to be able to to come after a base well to defend their base because we've got two three people capping and this is just what i love over the ridge line into the tank 492 damage and we also tracked him and that's a great result for us he doesn't repair his tracks which is a bit weird because he was the one who was charging back to be able to interrupt the cap circle now will we get one into the side of the t125 yes we will 493 damage done there to that fellow it's just oh man i really can't get over how flexible this tank is on the ridge lines how high the alpha damage is how good its accuracy is how decent its aim time is it really does feel like it might be one of the the better tier 8 premium tanks that wargaming has released at least one of the more novel ones and i'm sure that it's going to become a, a constant feature on my stream so I might have been a little bit confident and greedy at the end of the game. I put the Scorpion under pressure and it certainly does fold under pressure. It doesn't have the armor, it's a gigantic target, and it doesn't even really have the hit points to take much of a beating. And so you truly should try and keep this at mid to long range and play a supporting role for your allies. But even a game like that that didn't look that impressive, we still had a great result. 1,168 base experience points. This was an ace tanker, getting just shy of 4,000 damage for the five kills that we pulled off. And this is really what you guys are going to be looking for, the profit. We made 81,000 credits profit in that game. And my Gorilla crew would certainly be happy with the decent amount of crew training they would get from this and the little bit of a bonus for being a premium vehicle that looks like about 10%. So during the second game that we saw on Swamp, we were able to pick up 3,000 damage this game. That's more than any of the tier 10s were able to achieve 914 base experience points and yep 70,000 credits profit and do you know what even though I did have a bunch of premium rounds loaded in this tank because it was a test account and I wasn't firing my own credits I didn't actually fire a single APCR round the entire time that I was testing this tank I really felt that the 246 was more than enough at least for the targets that I was engaging I also managed to have some other good games in this tank, but the gameplay is rather slow paced and boring and so I don't really want to include it in this review. This game on Erlenberg Assault was the first ace tanker I managed to pick up in it. We got a high caliber here, 12,000, well sorry, 112,000 credits, 91,000 credits profit for our 3,600 damage done and a little bit of spotting for our team here, 1,500 assistance damage. So the Rheimatal Scorpion is certainly one of the best premium tanks that Wargaming have released in ages and I would go as far as to say that I think it's a little too good right now. And so next you might be asking how much is the Rheimatal Scorpion going to cost? Well Wargaming have priced it at 10,900 gold which I think is roughly about 40 euros. So the same price as all of the, the tier 8 heavy tanks. Um, which is a lot more than the tier 8 medium tanks. And when are we likely to see it? Well, according to Wargaming NA, it looks like it's going to be coming on the 18th of August. I would be very surprised if Europe doesn't release it on the same date. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this review, or maybe it was just useful to you. If it was, please consider giving the video a like. It really helps the channel out. And also, if this was not enough Rheumatile Scorpion for you, I will be playing it tonight on the live stream along with Jingles, so you can hear our full opinion. And remember, tonight is the Dream Stream, so if you want to come along, I've got 20,000 bonus cards codes redeemable on North America and the European server that will give you 15 premium consumables. So hopefully I'll see all of you guys then. I'm sure it's going to be an amazing event like last month. And let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the Rheinmetall Scorpion. Do you think that it looks like an awesome tank or do you think that its huge size and bad camera rating will make it a very easy target and you're going to skip out on this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.